G'day legends, Atron here, bringing you back for another Guild Wars episode. Now, it's been about a week since I've posted, but we have some juicy targets today. And of course, Dovekeeper has come out. So, we're just going to scroll through the bases now. We've got, I think I've only got the one Dovekeeper, but this base, this top base, is huge. We've got Empower Skelly, Empower Frank, Empower Anubis, Gunslinger Auto Energy, and Athene is obviously... Looking like she's got Empower there, but the Dove Keeper is either not close enough or is just not receiving the energy. Anyway, as the uh, title suggests, guys, we are going to wreck that top base and using Dove Keeper and seeing the power of Atlanta Core with this new hero on defense. I feel like uh, after a little bit, any 5 Vite or any empower dove keeper will definitely be put to rest um i mean she is great on head to head but minnow bombing ronin bombing atlanta core and mike uh deflect is not not her but everyone else as you as you will see soon enough so this is the setup i'm running with reason being um i still want mike even though i'm not going to be using his deflect i still want mike to buff minnow uh, in this example, I might not even do Minnow once um, Once Athene is gone, it becomes a lot easier But that Empower on all of those heroes definitely makes Roan a little more difficult So that's why I want that instant boom with Minnow I think is going to be one of the easiest ways to tackle that super Empower setup But uh, we'll go in, we'll see what happens we just got, we've got five Vite on everyone now. He is running a six, uh, I did end up rolling since my last videos, a, a five sprint or maybe I bought one for like $10. I don't know. They're selling talents like crazy these days. Uh, he is running 5 Vite. He is in Blitz. And he does have Bublo on him. So he's still got the speed of the um, the Bublo pet. And the 5 Vite and the Blitz for stun immunity. Mike is 5 Vite. Minnow is 5 Vite. Everyone is 5 Vite. I think all my 5 Vite crests are uh, currently on these heroes at the moment. So that is the setup. Minnow is obviously... Oh, he's not in Blitz, but he will be in a second. No, Blitz Lightning to move faster. Um, and he's in Yellowfin to have that stun immunity. So that's the setup, guys. Let's jump in to this top base and show the destruction and the vulnerability of these Dovekeeper defense bases. So I think, you know... This is what we do in the first week is we find out and we pick we pick apart what's going to happen and how to best deal with uh with these heroes so all right now we're going in yeah we'll go in now we're going now to the top base so i did mess around a little bit before i uh started recording and just finding out what the best way and what happens now one thing i do want to mention is this dove keeper appears to be a five vite dove keeper so she procs that one dove straight away for 12 seconds and then it dies right so as you can see she's not getting energy from the athene and i swear they're close enough that athene would be giving energy out so that is a little bit interesting to see there but we've got you know, empower Frank, which is easy to deal with enough to the start. Empower Skelly, you know, get that over. But the empower Anubis is definitely something that's uh, that's interesting. But unlike Mike, AC's or uh, Atlanta Core's shield is a hundred percent, and he is invulnerable, which is what makes him a little bit better at this. Definitely at dealing with the Dove Keeper and using those doves to really run a little bit of havoc. So what we want to do is we want to get the dove all the way to the edge all the way to the edge and then pretty much we just want to drop ac he's going to walk in athene is going to melt frank is going to melt over there we've got gunslinger who's almost dead up there now all everyone almost died right obviously the dove is fine that's no big deal but in my first little test run i killed all three so we're going to try and do that again and just see if we can get rid of the gu the gu oh, look at that got my breath Get rid of the Gunslinger, get rid of the Frank, that's easy enough. So, um, and the Athene dies almost instantly. So, we get this coming out, we get right to the edge, right to the edge, and then we wait for Athene to almost get to that proc stage. No, we got to make sure, got to make sure that um, I've actually dropped 
enough troops to get rid of the Skelly and the Frank Proc initially because Atlantical will die straight away. So as we probably did a little bit faster before or we just kept procking troops. So we get rid of both of them and then Atlanticor dies because of maybe the Anubis, another Empower hero which I'm not taking notice of. Uh, we saw in the first run that it works fine. It's just a little bit of you know, a little bit of our RNG and working out when those empowers are hitting and the best um, the best time to do that. So we wait for them to go up. We get Skelly and Frank's proc off. We get Anubis. We drop Atlanticor, but he is dying to the Gunslinger proc. I'm not sure. I wonder why it was so easy. Maybe I'll just do it quicker this time in before they get to the actual empower stage. So we draw that down, draw it down. And then we drop Atlanticor, he's in, that's great. Um, we've got Frank is dead, Gunsling is dead, he's just chilling on the side, he hasn't even gone into the base. We've dealt with Athene, Gunslinger, and Frank, and they're all in power, which is great because it just you know enables them to suicide straight away. Now, we want to deal with the troops, so I don't have to worry about Athene. I don't have to worry about the Frank proc anymore. I've got to only worry about the Anubis proc and the Skelly proc. So they're a lot easier to deal with, and that's why I've brought a Spiriter with me this time, because I do love my Spiriter. So she's going to go in. Don't have to worry about any Gunslinger procs. So, you know, he's going to get a couple of couple of procs off, and we're, we've dealt with the troops for the, for the most part. Now, normally I would want to use... Um, Atlanticor, for, oh, sorry, Anubis for um, cleanup. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put Ronan in and he's going to just deal with those first couple of troops, making sure that the Skelly proc is definitely getting hit by um, the troops on the side. So we make sure we're spamming those troops. No worries. Hopefully that Phoenix pet deals with those last couple of troops just so that Minobomb is all the more effective. Now, we, we're cross referring you know, we're, we're doing a bit of Minnow, we're doing a bit of Ronin Bomb here, um, but the troops are super important to make sure he doesn't get minced by the Skelly. Now, when she's in power, it makes it all an easier. So, if you see any in power doves, it's, it's really just a joke. So, um, but to lure her out is going to be, you know, a piece of cake. I might even put Anubis in first, and just because I don't have any troops left... Or what we might do is, I'm not sure how we can get her out. Okay, we can get Dove out. That's perfect. That's what we want. And now we're going to go over, make sure Skelly and Anubis have procced. And then we Pam on the Minnow, followed by the Mike. Now, we've got to be careful. I think he did get the buff there, which is fine. But all of a sudden, you know, we've got an extra... We just call, we just call the Doves an extra building out to the side. You know, no stress. We've got rid of three heroes. We did a 3v6 pretty much. And of course, Anubis will have no issues getting that extra 3%. So he's going to die one or, once or twice. He'll get back and he'll do the Doom Balloon once or twice. Happy days. So Atlanticor wrecking this Dovekeeper. Absolutely wrecking the Dovekeeper. And not the Dovekeeper. I mean, she didn't die. She didn't die. 18,000 damage cap, but, you know, that ability to proc on the edge of the map, because unlike Gunslinger, she, um, you know, her doves are targetable, that's something that is going to be super vulnerable to bases, because it's not hard, you just got to get one of them to proc, she's fast auto proc, so once that happens, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you can pretty much do whatever you want, you can get Anubis to proc on there, you can get Minnow to proc on there, as we did a, a Ronin walkthrough, just to clean up those troops, um, obviously that base I did try with Ronin at first was super difficult with just, um, with just, uh, a Ronin, because he was getting hit by Frank, he was getting hit by Skelly, he was getting hit by Anubis, um, and if any of those guys have got a little bit of accuracy, and the Athene obviously was wrecking from that side, um, so that was almost off limits. Um, yeah, that was, it was interesting. So, but that was definitely one of the hardest bases. Uh, it did take me a little while. Like, hardest base I've seen for Ronin bombing, especially, and that head-to-head -head sort of thing. So, just take note of that. But different strategies to see how we are dealing with this new hero, Dovekeeper. So, all right, I will... We're going to the next one, I think. So we'll do that. And 
I think they're all top. We won't be using Atlanta Core anymore. I think he was the only base that required it. But, you know, happy days. A bit longer on that first one, but I wanted to just explain, you know, a little bit more on how, how vulnerable Dovekeeper can make a base. So, all right, let's move on to this second one. So these second and third and fourth, fifth ones, um, I didn't run into any more Dove Keepers, so that's why I spent a little bit more time explaining the first one there. And I didn't really run into much in power either. So um, everything seems kind of simple. So we're gonna go from the top here, even though the, the Gunsling is up there. Um, we'll just try and roan and bomb this straight away. Uh, we will use a Spirit as I do like to do first um, on the the edge, what do we got? Gunslinger troops over there. So I want her to get rid of the troops. Um, now five Vite, she is skill 11. So his 200 attack speed is very nice in clearing those first initial couple of waves. So he's gonna get, you know, he just got three procs off there. And as I said in previous videos, a Spirited can replace Anubis for the initial troop clear for the Minnow Bomb. Now this base is probably not ideal for Minnow Bomb. So I still got Minnow here, which is, uh, you know, probably not ideal unless I can pull the um, the Rockno out somehow and then proc on him without having my energy reduced. I didn't even look at that. I just went straight in for this. So we will try and probably just leave Minnow out for this one and we'll go in for a straight uh, Ronin Bomb and just dealing with the rest of that. If that's, um, you know, it should be pretty simple to get most of the base destroyed if the skelly doesn't proc me. So we'll go both sides, making sure we've got enough troops to um, to deal with those skelly procs. And oh, I'm not even, I'm not getting both sides. So here we go, we're getting both sides now. Ronan is, Ronan's doing his work. Um, if he dies before 50% or on 50%, that is gonna be tough. So we're relying on the, um, what are we relying on? the phoenix pet really so wow he didn't do a lot there and 45 percent i'm not sure if that's an ideal setup but we might just risk going in because i th mm, we might just risk trying to get a proc off on this one thing over here i think if i loop around it doesn't look like there's going to be any totems that can hit me um asides the athene that's almost ready to proc and the Anubis that's full energy? No, not yet. He's not full energy, but as soon as he as soon as he goes off, that might be might be the case. So we've got a minute left. We don't have a lot of time. We've we've got our Ronin bomb pretty much failed for that instance, for example. But um will they come out anymore? We can sort of see. So Anubis is gonna proc, that's fine. So Anubis is down. That's one of the main issues there. Athene might wreck him straight away, but she does have to. All right, let's just, let's do this. Let's be a bit reckless. We got one, two, three, and then Mike. So will they walk around in time to proc? And they did. So they did walk around in time to proc, which is super lucky because we've only got 20 seconds left and we're at 94%. So I really want them to get this over with. Um, he can die one more time and we win it. So a little bit fast, Mike on Bublo definitely helped with that. Um, crossing, Ronan bombing and Minnow bombing to, to deal with these like fast and power bases is actually kind of helping um, using a, you know, the dual technique, I suppose, if you, if you have such little time, especially with high accuracy, you really want to make the most of that power punch. So luckily he was fast enough with Blitz and Mike on Bublo to boost that speed around and the copters got distracted by the troops. So let's check out this other one. We can probably do the same sort of thing as we just did. All right, 314 might, 314K. Uh, the other ones I think are all really like really minnow minnow worthy bases so we do have a gunslinger but look i'm not i'm not worried about that at all um we will simply just uh, they've got a they've got no in powers they got no anything so this base will blow up um fairly quickly what i'm going to do is a little bit different i'm actually going to send in my heartbreaker first even though you know you would generally wait for cleanup crew on that and then see how much damage you can do and see if we can pop the base in one go. Now, we can do that with like an added Cupid or something like that, but 
you know, for this example, I'm gonna just see how much damage and how much damage to the town hall Heartbreaker can do once she gets her proc off. You know, a few buildings, if she hits the town hall, that's gonna be ideal. And um, she does have that pyro mage there. So a little bit of damage going in, nothing on the town hall, but that's fine. I'm hoping that the, the last thing standing should only be the town hall. My minnow is charged enough that that should be the only thing left. So we just distract, distract, and then Minnow Mike, 93%. We've got the Town Hall standing. Let's not use gems. So we got Anubis out. Uh, they all died anyway. So that doesn't really matter. And then Anubis kills the Town Hall in the last thing. Super easy base. Happy days. So no troops there. We will just go in and revive the heroes and go to the next one real quick. So what do we got? If, she, if, if, if she'd hit the Town Hall, any damage... Um, you could have popped it. You could have popped the base. Just something a little bit different. So, last two. I think they're really dodgy, these bases, when I quickly went through them. Oh, this one was alright, but there was no extra, um... There was no extra anything really going on. So, like, I will... I don't know. A lot of towers down here. We can try and... We can probably try and do it the same way we did before. So, you know, we get the troops. We get a spearer out there. Um, he's going to proc a couple of times, make sure those copters are trying to go north if possible. And then they'll walk in. All the troops are down. Ronan should take care of most of it. So, oh, that one building that I was going to proc on, we can try and proc on the same thing, do that same thing as before. But the arrow towers looking like they're, oh, they're pretty beefy. Like Minnow might be able to survive, but maybe not. So we'll see how we go, how Ronan deals with everything. I probably want Ronan not next to Grim or SK. So we'll just put him at the top over here. He'll deal with a little bit. Gunslinger troops to the side. Deal with the copters. Let's see how much Phoenix does the work. And if he does enough, we might be able to just use Heartbreaker and Anubis for the cleanup rather than relying on that tricky little fast minnow that we did on the other one, which might not work, which was just lucky enough. Especially if you get past 50%, we were just lucky that it was under under 50%. Okay, so we've, we've lost again. We're going to do the same thing. So we will try and do the, that exact same thing and see if um, we get minnow off. If he doesn't proc, um, that's fine. Or if he dies beforehand, what we're worried about is if he procs and it's like less damage. <laughs> So we will distract, distract, distract. Lots of troops, lots of troops. Two over there. Oh, he procced on the wall. So that was great. Awesome. Really cool. Procs on the wall. No worries. We do have a lot of arrow towers though. So this is going to be... This is going to be interesting because we want all the troops going there. We get Heartbreaker in. Will she die? Will she get her proc off? She does do a little bit of damage. Two towers. Great. So that is exactly what we needed. And then Anubis for the end game. So that's definitely going to be taken care of in two Doom Balloon procs. Unless he was Ares, that would have sucked. Um, but yeah, so those walls are... Uh, not sure if it's based on speed, but Minnow seems to be proccing through those walls, uh, which is, you know, not a lot of people, well, there's not a lot of videos of Minnowing out at the moment, so I think I'm, I think I like bringing back a little bit of cross, crossbreed guild wars, uh, and having a little bit of fun with that. Now, this last base was fairly easy from my memory, so I don't think I'm even going to, with, uh, to respawn the troops, so we'll just get everyone else out. I think it was a fairly easy clear. Um, they had their Minnow team out from memory, so I think we've done the last three in a row now. 306, still the highest. And yeah, so this is where I love using a Spiriter. She can proc on the edge, especially if there was even more full, but nothing to even worry about here. So we can go straight in for a Spiriter. 200 attack speed on that. Um, and from what I'm looking at, he seemed to be procking and then almost getting half energy back at the start of that correct me if i'm wrong but that's kind of what it looked like he was procking and then getting half the energy back or well, very quick anyway but let's not uh, there's nothing that's going to reduce my damage is it no that's fine she's going out she's got angie on so let's just end this real quick and procking 
get Heartbreaker in there. Uh, and put Ronan in the top just for fun and games. So, well, he's taking a long time. He's taking a really long time. So let's just put Anubis down <laughs> and finish it off. So that's it, guys. That was it. That was a pretty easy Guild Wars. I haven't posted for a couple of weeks because the bases have been super boring. But I well, posted for a week. But the Dove Keeper is definitely adding a little bit more excitement into the game at the moment. So she uh, haven't rolled her, but I don't know. I was thinking about making a video on her best talent and, and why. A lot of people are saying Bulwark, um, you know, or Tenacity or War God for such high damage. So, but there's a couple more mechanics which I think are worth looking into for different modes and, you know, universal, like, what do you want out of her and what do you think is going to be the best? So, let me know if you'd like to, to see a breakdown on um, her different skills. Um, I've got access to accounts that do have dub keepers, so that's fine. Um, definitely be able to get something going on there. One thing I will note with Dovekeeper is uh, she, what's her skill? Can I just see her skill here? Even though she's 18k, um, Stone Skin won't reduce it, won't reduce the 18k damage, but Flame Guard will. It only reduces it to like 14k um, and it only will reflect back, you know, 45% of the 5k difference or something like that. But um, it, it, it creates less damage. It's probably not ideal, but it, it's it's worth noting that um, Flame Guard works in that way. I haven't tested Blade Shell yet. I would assume the 100% damage returned goes off before cap, and so they would just have it returned like Atlanta Core. Um, but yeah, that could be that could be an interesting talent too. So a few we want to test out. Drop a comment when you want to see the, the most talent tested um, or most comparisons tested. That'd be kind of cool. And we'll probably get onto that early in the week or next week after the weekend. It's always hectic for me. So, but anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.